Greetings and salutations. Thanks for clicking on the video. Today we're taking a look at Linux Lite. I did a video about Linux Lite a while back and now I'm running it on the old e-machine. Yesterday I did a video about running Ubuntu GNOME 1404 on this machine. I had no intention of actually keeping it running here because running the GNOME desktop on a low resource machine is not something that I would recommend. You get more than two applications open and everything just stops. Linux Lite is designed for low resource hardware and I'm pretty sure this is the one I'm going to stay with on this machine for quite some time. Uh, I have never run Linux Lite myself for any length of time but I have recommended it to clients. My brother actually runs Linux Lite on a machine that only has 512 megabytes of memory in it and it's got a 32-bit processor. It's a, like a 10-year-old Dell and it works quite well and he can actually do a lot with it so I thought maybe I would give this a shot on this old machine I have been kind of doing a little distro hopping and seeing what will work best on this computer I end up using it quite a bit these days so here's the web page and I've already clicked on the download page if you go to the home page it's just like a, a slideshow and a little bit about it and this particular version of Linux Lite that we're looking at is 2.8 and it just came out on February the 1st. They give you two choices to download here. Uh, you can get a 32-bit version or you can get a 64-bit version. So running Linux Lite on a machine that actually did have some oomph to it, you know, like lots of memory and multi-core processors and maybe a good video card, it would work just fine. As a matter of fact, you'd probably find that you're applications would be super super fast because Linux Lite does not feature all of the effects and animations that you find with most Linux distributions these days as a matter of fact it doesn't even run a desktop compositor by default so very simple very straightforward and that's kinda of what I was looking for because I've just this machine it's an older computer I wanted something that would maximize what resources it actually had. And Linux Lite is based on Ubuntu 14.04 and there are a lot of distributions that are based on Ubuntu 14.04. Most of them don't work very well to tell you the truth other than like Linux Mint and this is one of them that actually does work quite well. They have put a lot of polish into this and a lot of thought so you have a bunch of tools at your disposal that really make working with Linux a breeze especially for somebody who is coming to Linux for the first time this is a really good gateway distro I think to to get started with it so you get the Linux Lite welcome screen that loads up when you first install the system and to make that go away you just uh, click down here which I have already done and you open up the page here and then it steps you the getting started thing and it steps you through this uh, install all the updates you can do that there and then it talks about software that you can install on your computer and let's take a look at that because this is actually really cool so you put in your password and this opens up and yeah you have to confirm yes they do a lot of confirmation on this when you actually using the light tools they, they do a lot of confirmation which I think is a good thing it's a good thing for people who are just learning to have all of these little things come up that kinda of slow down the process so they don't get confused if you are a longtime Linux user that might get a little bit you know, annoying to you but there are other ways of doing this and of course we'll talk about that a little bit later on in the video while this is getting itself together let's talk about the desktop it's XFCE when it first loads up it has a theme that is like a very high contrast theme so it's basically white and black and with a very like light blue highlight on things and I found it to be a bit annoying so I changed the theme here to one of the stock themes in the system. So let's uh, go look at installing software here. This takes a second or two to populate and this list of all of this really groovy software that you can install. And 
I didn't really want a whole lot of it. This machine is just for email and internet, basically. But I did install Google Chrome, which is nice to have that just be an option instead of having to go to the Google website, download it, install the dev file, all that stuff. So they have that set up by default, and they already have the uh, they already have the Google repository in software sources that's already there. And then there are you get like the extended extras you can load uh, codecs what else do we have in here there's a lot to choose from the music player that they have up here by default is Clementine I had never used Clementine I'd had people told, tell me all the time that Clementine was great so when I first installed this I installed Clementine well I did not like it and so I put Banshee on I, I could not figure out in Clementine how to turn a lot of the features off. And usually with music players, as I have talked about in past videos, I just want it as simple as it can possibly be. I don't really need to have all that functionality. I don't want album art. I don't care. I don't care about metadata, fix up, all that crap. I just want to turn it all off. I do that manually for my music and I don't worry about it. But anyway, if. If you want, if you if it looks like something you'd want to use, you can use Clementine. I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just saying I didn't like it. Uh, they have this weather thing that you can download here. It's an applet that goes down in the XFCE panel. So I had to put that on the machine because I thought that was really cool. It's actually very easy to set up, and it knew where I was immediately, which was very cool. How it knew where I was, I don't know, but it did so. And then you can open it up here and it gives you a, a, a bunch of forecasts and things like that. Actually quite easy to set up. So that was a little extra something that I wanted to have, that little weather applet. So anyway, you choose the software that you want here. They got video editing software, which in this case is OpenShot. They got GUVC view for webcam. All kinds of groovy stuff to choose from there and so you just choose your software and then you turn the thing loose and it goes out and installs it on the computer so that's pretty nice and then there are there's more stuff here minimum requirements and that sort of thing so we can go ahead and close this out now one of the things that I really thought was groovy about this was of course you get the whisker menu in by default that's great because I love the XFCE whisker menu and you can do a lot with this you can make it uh, you can make it bigger and it keeps going away stop that there we go so you can you can resize it and play with it and all that stuff add things to the favorites here just by right clicking add things to the panel right click and choose move put them wherever you want to do uh, where, wherever you want them to go So that's pretty awesome. You have settings down here that will take you through a settings manager and you've seen that in past videos. And that's fine but some of the settings don't show up in that all settings. So what the Linux Lite folks did was is they came up with their own control center which has access to all of the settings on the machine plus access to the tools the, that Linux Lite installs as well so that's really nice here's where you can go through and do a lot of things with the desktop you can choose your themes and your backgrounds so if we open up configure desktop here we're gonna get the uh, desktop settings for XFCE I'm actually using this wallpaper is in here I think the one that you get by default is just the feather but I like this one because I found it quite soothing so I chose that Here's where you can set the icons on the desktop. All right, let's see what else we have here. You can add the trash can. You can take the trash can away. Whatever you want to do. Here's appearance. And here's where I found the theme that I'm currently running. I'm just using the what they call a dark theme. I don't really call this a dark theme, but why not? They have some pretty cool stuff in here. It looks pretty good. Um... Here's one that doesn't look bad at all. It's called Crux. So you can just 
through these different uh, themes and see which one you like best. Industrial. Oh, there you go. A quick tour through the themes. Of course, with XFCE, you can go and download as many of these as you could possibly ever want. So, there's a lot of things that you can do with the XFCE desktop. It is extremely elastic. Let's take a look at system here. They got some pretty cool things in here to look at. This is something that I had a bit of a, a kind of a weirdness uh, issue with when I first uh, was setting up the computer here. Now, this is the About Me, which you have seen in XFCE before. But the actual users utility that you use to set up users is very strange in that it doesn't take any of this information when you set it up. It's very simple. So basically you create your user and then you figure out what group they're in and by default they're not administrators so you're the administrator when you install that's all good and fine. And then you think well okay well I'll come back here and I'll open this up and I'll fill this out. And the problem that I had was is that I had created an account for Cindy on here and then I was actually logged into her account and I opened this up and it wouldn't let me change this information so which was really kind of weird so what I ended up doing was I just kinda said well forget about that um, and I opened up a terminal and yes I've already made the terminal huge for you guys <laughs> a huge terminal and uh, the command that I used was change finger. So I did it like this. I went um, sudo chfn cindy. And then it asked for my password. And here I was able to change everything but the picture. Of course, this is a. Uh, the uh, finger information goes back to the very early days of Linux when actually goes back to the days of Unix which Linux is a work alike of and it's when you had these big mainframe computers that a lot of people in educational institutions and corporations used so they would store some information so that's why you got that kind of a weird thing like room number there and anyway so that's how I ended up putting her full name in there and then as far as the picture was concerned I just uh, dragged in the little face that I already had and that worked just fine so you may need to as the administrator open up that particular application as the administrator or put your administrator password I just found that to be a little weird the other thing that I didn't like about Linux Lite was uh, the fact that it came with the X screensaver I don't like the X screensaver. Running a screensaver in this day and age is a little bit strange anyway, but you still need some functionality if you choose to have your system go to sleep, that when it wakes up you need to be able to lock the screen. So they include light locker, which is fine. And so I, on past implementations of XFCE I have gone and got like GNOME screensaver or GNOME locker or something like that this one I left alone because it works really well with the login screen and so when you when you actually lock the screen or the machine goes to sleep and then when you wake it back up if you set it up to do that then it comes up with a screen that presents all the users or user accounts on it so if somebody wants to sign in to their account while it's suspended on your account they can just do that directly and they don't have to click switch user and wait for that to do that so that's pretty cool that's that's nice actually but I don't like the X screensaver that comes with the XFCE desktop by default they could either dump it or come up with something a little bit more modern as far as I'm concerned just my two cents worth I mean a lot of people don't even use this functionality anymore anyway but I do in multi-user environments I like to have the system to be able to take care of itself and I get if I get up and walk away from this computer I want it to be able to go ahead and suspend itself and shut down and then if somebody does come along and 
tap the power key to wake it back up, then I want it to be locked. I don't want it to jump right back into my desktop. Let's take a look here real quick at one more thing, because I think it's actually pretty cool. I installed BleachBit by default on this machine, and so therefore I can clean out the caches and do some uh, maintenance that way, but the Linux Lite team has included this lovely little application that will allow you to do tweaks. You can clean out all kernels, you can change kernels, you can do all kinds of stuff. It's light tweak. So that is pretty cool. Clean out browser caches. Definitely something worth taking a look at. So it gives you a lot of control over the machine and that's wonderful and you know like the unity desktop experience or the gnome desktop experience you really don't have that much control over the machine you're going to have to install extensions and things like that to get down and dirty like this whereas these guys pretty much just uh, lay it all out for you having a lot of choices is a problem for new users but at the same time having them well laid out and explained helps a lot when people get their computers set up so my hat is off to the Linux Lite team they have done a really nice job this is a nice very easy to use and uh, of course my not my personal experience but clients experience tells me that it's very stable and this is a good place to start if you want to get into Linux some it's one of those distros that'll help you get going so definitely worth taking a look at, especially if you have low resource hardware. And seems to be working quite well on this machine so far. We've screen captured this video without a glitch and without a problem. So that's pretty amazing. And I've been opening and closing software as we rolled along here. And it didn't care if I tried to do this with the GNOME desktop environment. Uh, it, it, you know, the... <laughs> screensaver would have, or the screen capture software would have crashed a long time ago. Okay, gang, I'm done rambling on about Linux Lite. I think I've showed you everything that I want to show you. Definitely worth taking a look at. Oh, and by the way, they have the uh, VirtualBox guest editions already installed if you run this in VirtualBox. If you want to install it in VirtualBox, which is nice. If you want to develop a Linux distro, gang, let me tell you a little trick. Make sure it runs good in VirtualBox because the people who write about, do videos about, and talk about Linux distros in the community. They load it up in VirtualBox. So if, make sure it works good in VirtualBox. That's just a little inside tip there. All right, I'm done. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure and check out freedompenguin.com for some cool stories about Linux from me and other contributors. Also, Easy Linux on the web if you'd like me to help you get started with Linux. And do check out Easy Linux on Facebook because there is where all of this in these videos show up first. And not only that, I also share other tidbits from the Linux community that I think the average Linux desktop user would enjoy. So do check that out and give it a like when you come by. Thank you very much for watching. We'll do it again.